Aaron Alexander returns to the show. Back. We have uh, your journal out in front of us, which is not podcast topics. It's just stuff that you find interesting. That's right. Yeah. All right. So let's fucking dive in. You were you're trying oh to give me God. a quote, and I was like, no, 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 no. Pause. Save it. It's not a quote. Save it. It's not a quote. What is it? All right. All right. The first thing, this wasn't my intention, by the way, just that's for, for I listeners. Don't, what, I don't have an intention. But here we are. Day. So the first thing that's in the journal that I find interesting. So the vagus nerve, um, 80% of the fire is like kind of a famous nerve. It's it's known as the, the wandering nerve. It helps with innervating the, the, the diaphragm, various different organs, um, really big on function of your autonomic nervous system. So like how you feel your resting state. Um, Parasympathetic. But, all that stuff, yeah, regulating it. Mm-hmm. But so anyway, so eighty percent of the nerve fibers from that are afferent, meaning they're sensory. And so the reason that I think that's really interesting is kind of like metaphoric in a sense that eighty percent of this nerve, amongst other ones as well, are made for sensation. And then there's this twenty percent that's the efferent that's based off of like the motor do go have at it like rah, execute oh no shit and so it's really fascinating that the world that we live in is kind of flipped in mm-hmm. that you know so our most of us most of us we're like eighty twenty the opposite direction we're just fucking go get it you know and then there's this little bit of like every now and again maybe I, I feel something yeah but yeah meanwhile the actual function and structure of your nervous system is set up in such a way that it's like feel. <laughs> so anyways that's the first thing in my notebook i love that <laughs> i love that that's a great way to start it off uh wim hoff's talked quite a bit about the vagus nerve um also you've seen the documentary i am with uh tom shadiak no it's awesome so I watch it and i'm going to tell my listeners right now you have to watch the documentary because aubrey marcus and i are going to have tom shadiak on our podcast he was the director of Liar Liar, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, the original. Um, ton of fucking great movies. Bruce Almighty, like, basically gave Jim Carrey his career. Obviously, Jim Carrey's Jim Carrey, but, and he would have taken off no matter what, but awesome dude, super woke. And he did this awesome documentary called I Am, where he travels searching like the meaning of happiness. And he talks to meditators and monks and Buddhists and just all over the fucking world, he travels in search of what bring, makes people happy. And it's really fucking cool. It's a dope story. What's he find? Um, he finds a lot of this has to do with the vagus nerve. It has to do with tapping in, in silence, being comfortable in your own skin, doing the work to heal. And then from there, you can appreciate, you have gratitude for things like that because it gives you perspective on what's important and what isn't. Yeah. There's a guy, Stephen Porges, who founded the whole polyvagal theory and kind of... Polyvagal? Like- Polyvagal. Yeah. <laughs> More than one vagal? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, really. Um, you know, so he found it. He's he's like a main pioneer in that whole whole uh, kind of uh, discovery. What is polyvagal more- without me cracking jokes because of the polyamory? Yeah, so just the vagus nerve isn't just one specific nerve. It actually breaks into one into the front and into the back. And both sides of those control different sides of like more of that like sympathetic, parasympathetic side of the nervous system. Mm. Um, so poor just pioneered that stuff. And one of the things that he gets into, he has a thing called Safe Sound Project, SSP. And he has people listen to these audio tapes. I haven't actually listened to it to, to know exactly. I've just read about it. Um, but I, I believe it's a five-day program. People can just check it out. Look up SSP, Steve, uh, Stephen Porges, Polyvagal Theory. Um, and he ends up with this audio tape, essentially tuning people's nervous system with these audio frequencies. No that's shit. What, that's is what we're doing all like, the time. Is he using like sound bowls or uh, tuning forks or things like that? Like what's he doing? Or is he just playing like a note? I think, it's, I think it's more like frequencies. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and like then there's binaural also, beats or... I don't know if it's okay. binaural beats. Okay. I don't think it is binaural okay. beats. Um, you know, but so what's interesting with that is, is that our nervous systems we're always being tuned by our environment, you know? So that's what you see with like, you know, a mother speaking to their child, you know, it's like the, there's something about that. He calls it prosodic voice. It's like this melodic voice that the child's like, oh, mm. you know, so Unless kids are you're like, knock it off. I've had kids it. don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so kids are so good with sensing this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's, what's really interesting is, is it's like, 
we, I just find it endlessly fascinating how our physical world forms our structure and forms our emotions, forms the way that we think, forms the way that we feel, even to the point that you can put an audio tape inside your, in between your ears, and it can literally start to work with things like uh, ADHD, uh, anxiety, depression, a whole plethora of different disorders, I guess you could call them, um, challenges, just through tones. You know, so so many people look at kids that are like growing up in this, in the inner city, you know, and they're constantly, you know, (laughs) doors slamming, parents yelling at each other, really challenging. You know, it's very easy for us to feel like it's just like, oh, well, I never hit the kid. It's like, well, the sound was hitting him all day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it's, it's, it's just fascinating to me how, how, how easily, how malleable we are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's funny. Cause there is, there's two sides of that coin. There is the, I'm going to make myself bulletproof or whatever term you want to use. And, and, you know, from there that could be like a, you know, you have this hard nosed military idea of what it means to be a man. And then you also have the flip side of that coin and there's nothing wrong with that. I think it's probably critical for, for combat, but, um, you know, the flip side of that coin, being able to have a full expression of feeling and being aware of that, yep. being aware that everything has an impact on you and all stress is stress in the body. So if you have chronic stress from an emotional, an emotionally fucked up partnership or work or financial or shitty diet, fill in the blank or chronic bad sleep, like yep. all those things contribute. Yep. To and then there's there's downfall. the balance between you stress versus the other stress, the bad stress. Mm-hmm. You know, and so yeah. it, like that's that's the dance. Like that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're into like biohacking or like any variety of getting healthier, it's figuring out what's that balance between pushing myself to the point of hypertrophy if you want your muscles to grow, you know, or 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 whatever whatever adaptation that you're seeking. What's the point that I'll actually gain that adaptation versus what's the point where I went too far and I crash? Yeah, and that's the whole game. You know, and most of us, I think, are more in a place of chronic stress. It seems to be the general consensus. You know, and, and our solution is more, again, it's that the inverse of what the function of the vagus nerve, you know, we go more motor, more go. I just got to push through it. I'm going to push when we through, get through this, this week. Thing, like, I'll rest this weekend. It's like, dude, maybe <laughs> there's a chance you've been pushing through it for 30 years, you mm-hmm. know, and you've, you haven't, you never even had the, the tools access to the tools for you to actually step back and feel and start to actually heal. You know, I think that that's something that's, it's just, that's something I'm really enamored with like meditation, you know, like before doing stuff like this, I, at one point was like, and today a little bit, cause we were kind of like, just in a sense, rolling out of bed actually, mm-hmm. um, you know, so I'm kind of like trying to stir things up. Uh, but previously I was like, all push-ups, all go like, whoa, you know, now I'm like meditation before yeah. doing something like yeah. this slow it down you know so it's i think it's maybe that happens with like age or something i don't know yeah that might be it we're getting older how do you know <sighs> not too old 31 oh god yeah you're a baby oh no i know i turned 37 this month yeah yeah yeah. you look older because the beard yeah yeah but you have no gray in it actually so you still look your age mm. and you have a beautiful hairline thank you very much all right enough about you appreciate that uh, what else what else <laughs> do we got in this <laughs> this little play. This reminds me of uh, oh dear God. of uh, the right. Fonz's green playbook about, in right. the Water Boy. All right, let's talk <laughs> He's about got all the great the great plays gets stolen from him. Yeah, he's got to win right. it back. All right. So something else that I find interesting is production of nitric oxide naturally in the body. You know, so people are seeking out like Viagra and all these different supplements, NO2, whatever. Um, I'm sure there's a supplement called NL2. Um, you know, so humming, there's a guy called Charles, Carl's Lundsberg. Dude, I've heard this NO, guy. I think on, was it on your podcast or I'm Green sure Shields? we've talked about it. Okay. I, I'm not sure. Um, you know, so he's professor of nitrous oxide, which I didn't know that existed, but apparently it does. And he found that just a simple act of humming increases NO2, uh, by 15 times inside your bloodstream. So th- there's, I think some of this stuff is a little bit potentially dubious as far as like how long the NO2 lasts in the body yeah. and all that. Um, but it, it's just a fascinating thing. Like breathing through your nose in general ends up increasing NO2 dramatically in the body. I think it's something like 35 times, but I'm, I might be, you got to fact check that part, mm-hmm. but more. 
You know, so you have this labyrinth that the air passes through in your nasal passages. And as it does that, it picks up these, these NO2 molecules. And we breathe through our mouth, we don't, we don't have that. Yeah, and there's no filter in the mouth either. And there's no filter. It doesn't cool the air down. It ends up being a little bit, it, a bit like collapsive on the actual structure of your jaw. Um, you know, so when you're naturally, all this like Chinese medicine stuff where people are saying, you know, like, oh, you like put the tongue up to the roof of the mouth, you know, complete the microcosmic orbit so you can have a full body <laughs> orgasm, you know, like that's, they're like tongue to the roof of the mouth to complete that, that electrical circuit from language that a lot of people in like Western world might not love. Um, but structurally you're literally pushing that tongue out against that hard palate to create space in your jawline. You know, so when children, if they're if they're mouth breathers, which sounds like so terrible, calling somebody a mouth breather, like oh, <laughs> there's uh, more mouth breathers in the world. Than so the yeah, it sounds it sounds like worse than it that it maybe it's pretty bad actually, um, but it's yeah, it's pretty defaming that word mouth breathing. Um, but literally, as you're doing that, you'll see it's just not attractive for one thing. You know, so the jaw starts to kind of recede back, and you kind of get like this double chin type thing, and then you're as you're doing that, you're not pushing up with the tongue. So now all you have is the musculature of your face pressing in, collapsing your facial structure. And so to get that like- I want this to be the clip that we run on social <laughs> media with <without laughs> making that fucking face. <laughs> Good. Yes. Good. Yeah, we can, I'm sure that'll be, I'm sure that'll, that'll be the case. Um, so it starts collapsing your facial structure, right? So you, your muscles are active. You know, you're, you're constantly- compressing yourself and that mm -hmm. outward force from the tongue in this case um, is helpful with kind of like balancing that and creating space pretty freaking fascinating and then along with that final piece um, as a mouth breather the tendency is to become more of like a clavicular breather so breathing up around your neck mm -hmm. you know so yep. that's like the startle reflex using uh, accessory muscles very sympathetic yeah yeah. yeah. So, and all that stuff's good. Like, there's no like it's it's easy to bash sympathetic versus parasympathetic. That's not the case. Every time you take a breath in, that's a sympathetic response. Every time you take breath breath out, that's parasympathetic. You can tune that too. Mm -hmm. uh, but the tendency, I just mouth breathe a little bit. Hope people weren't offended. Um, but the tendency with that is, if you're breathing through your mouth like that, you're kind of chronically putting yourself a little bit more into that side of like that startle reflex. Once again. How many people for the last 30 years of their lives have been stuck in a chronic startle reflex and they just don't realize it? So something as simple as just starting to bring that breath through your nose, that compounded times a day, times a week, times a year, times 20 years, like huge impact. Mm. You know, so there's small, subtle things that we're just not thinking about, but they're there, they're on the table. There's so much shit that we can do right now that would change our biology for the you know for the future version of ourselves that we're just like eh. yeah whatever it's not a big deal whatever i'll get to it later you're not going to get to it later <laughs> <laughs> get to it yeah. now or shut get up to it now. Yeah. diet starts tomorrow aaron <laughs> we like shit today <laughs> <laughs> what else we got in here? Oh man, there's right, a lot. I, I gotta, I gotta, there's I, a lot. I gotta, I gotta dig in if we're gonna if we're gonna go like that. All right. Well, this is kind of interesting. Half of Americans can't afford a four hundred dollar bill, an unexpected bill. Ninety percent of doctor visits are stress based. I think it's all associated. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, that's kind of a, a separate, but I think that that could potentially be tied back into like a physiological type thing as well. Mm. You know, people chronically living in this, like, I'm on the edge of disaster. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like you, when was the last time you were in that place? You, you remember, you remember this, I'm sure. Uh, edge of disaster. Couldn't afford a oh, sub thousand dollar bill. Like that yeah. would, that would ruin, um, ruin your world. I would say 2018. Damn. Yeah. What's that like? Um... It's pretty stressful, you know? I think it's, it's. I mean, this is the first time in my life where I've been able to really not spend frivolously and do whatever the fuck I want. I don't have fuck you money, but I'm certainly in a place now where I don't worry about how much we spend at the grocery store. I don't worry if we have a friend in town and we need to buy him food. Yeah. I don't worry about any of those things anymore. And if we get a bill, I can pay it, you know? So yeah. I, even just like, I, I bet on... Uh, Came Velasquez in his last fight versus Francis Ngannou, and I lost seventeen hundred bucks. 
that'll probably be my last bet for a long time, maybe ever, <laughs> just because that's the nature of MMA. You went but learned. I was able to pay, you know, my guy really quickly. It wasn't like I had to wait or. You know, I was, fuck, man, where's this going to come from? Like, I wouldn't have made the bet. You don't bet if you don't have the money to lose, basically. But I had the money to lose. And um, and I love Kane. Wanted to show my support and root for him. And also thought he was going to win. That's the real reason I put money on him. But yes, you know, like that that that's like a polar opposite expression of that, where it's like, hey, we can still afford all of our food. We can get babysitters. We can have date nights. And if I have, you know, an occasional loss in MMA betting, then... um it's not going to break the bank where we're fucked and now we can't go on dates and yeah. we have to have a, uh, you know, $150 spending limit every time we go to the store, like shit like that, you know? So I think I remember Rogan talking about that the first time he went from wondering if he could pay his bills each month and living check to check to where like that shift happened where he didn't need to worry about it anymore. Yeah. He huge. always had money in his account. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much been 2019. There is, I mean, but fuck, in 2018, I've, I was overdrawn a couple of times wow. in my checking. No doubt. You do a lot, but it's so funny. So I so I come from, I think, a far more like scarce model than um, maybe some people that I, I, I don't know, maybe not. What is your model? You come from a scarce model? I come from super scarce. You're from and then super my parents, scarce model. Like we, we, ate, we ate spam and we grew up on spam, craft mac and cheese. Occasionally we'd get kielbasa sausage in the mac and cheese, but we were shopping at Lucky's, Albertsons. But how Safeway. did you feel? Eating that way? Yeah. Did you feel like you were okay? Did you always feel like you were fed? Did you always feel comfortable? You I always, always feel like yeah, you were protected No, no, we didn't safe? go without. We didn't go without food. Even if we had to eat Bush's baked beans for dinner, we didn't go without food. So I think that because I had more of like a, 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 a I think like a, sh- like a shock in my upbringing, where it's like, oh, all of a sudden, like the floor is being pulled from out, and it seems like we don't know what's going to happen. Is dad going to be dead? Is is the house going to go away? Is like, what's what's next? I have a feeling, I suspect, that that kind of inclined me more towards like a scarcity type mindset of like, mm. at any time, all this shit could blow up. Yeah, you know. And so I've kind of had this like chronic squirrel you know, stashing nuts Safe. away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of people since do that. I was like a little guy. You like our grandparents who lived through the great depression. A lot of them live that way. They're just penny pinchers. And that this, cause they couldn't unlearn what the great depression was like. Yeah. And it's crazy to think like that was, you know, less than a hundred years ago. It fucking damn sure can happen again. I mean, you saw the totally. housing crisis oh, in it's, 2008. It's very likely. Going um, on. very likely will happen again in our lifetime. But, um, I don't know what's better, you know, like the way I live now and I've, the way I lived last year, even when I, when I wasn't, I wasn't broke, I was making good money, but we have a lot of expenses, you know, my, my wife doesn't work and I want it to stay that way. I don't want to outsource who raises our children. Yeah. And, um, but I think with that, there was always just a a trust that I have that all will be provided for anything that I need is coming. And Mm. so I don't know if that's blind faith. It's not me thinking of it in like terms of like the secret and shit like that. It's it's just me realizing like there will be times where we have to pinch pennies, times where we can spend a little bit more, and in that ebb and flow, I, I'm not, I don't have to fucking worry about losing the house or my car or any of that stuff. You yeah. know, like I don't I don't think that way. Um, probably should stash some more away, for sure. You ever think about like the save ten percent of everything you get kind of thing? That's what a lot of I've heard that a lot of financial folks recommend. Yeah, that might be a good idea. It's something. It's something. I think it's something. Something like that is, is a valuable thing because well, I'm this, maxing my 401k. I'm doing other other things in that sense. So, well, so I mean, we can tie it back to like a biological thing too. Like, I, I think having that that's that 10 percent could be that breath, nose, or nose nose breathing as you're in the room. Mm, you know, it's like the a, daily or, practice. Yeah, yeah, it could be that sitting on the floor. It could be that get a freaking pull up bar, hang it between your office door, and just give a little a little hang. You know, and every mm. time I kind of think of that as being kind of like you're 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 adding money into your your account. Yeah. You know, so like most that. of us throughout the whole day, we're just fucking banging out credit. Boom, boom, boom. You know, and it's mm-hmm. like it's like you have so many opportunities, just like just 10%, man. It's not yeah. complicated. That's the thing though. Like, it does need to be daily, especially when it comes to like like anything that's for you. Yeah. Even just the way our work work is set up, you know, like grind for five days, then take two days oh, off. And then totally it's like, broken, I'm just going to get through it and then, I'll, and then I'll rest. And it's like, no, most people get shit faced on the weekends. 
Yeah. You know, quite a few Americans and Canadians too get shit faced on the weekends, Aussies too, you know, and it's like that you're not recovering before you go back to work, but everybody's working for the weekend. That was a walkout song I went out to by Loverboy. Like, it's so fucking true. Like, that's it. And then you think like over time, because it's all, you got to pay that debt back. It's all on credit. You ever see those, you ever see those wasps that um, they like hijack the brains of, of uh, cockroaches and then they put their, their baby, their like sack of babies, whatever, whatever the hell kind of. Inside a roach? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it's pretty cool. And you then got they come it, you out of their gut got, like alien. Yeah, is that where really Scott Jones needs got to look the this fucking... shit up? Look up, look up wasp hijacks. The article I saw was wasp hijacks spiders, but it has a video of of, of roaches. Anyways, if you guys could, we can link to it, it in the show somewhere notes. to the world. It's so cool, <laughs> dude. So this, so the wasp jumps on the back of this cockroach, and it does this weird, like sexual looking, penetratory thing down through, you know, whatever, it's thorax or something. Shoots its load inside. Shoots some type of neurotoxic load inside of it. And then the and then the, it's like and then it just kind of waddles off. And then it's like they kind of like they separate. Kind of like they just got done having sex mm. in a way. And then they're like, oh, 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 that's crazy. And then they come back. And then the cockroach is like this docile, brainwashed critter that's like, hey, what's up? And then <laughs> the wasp's like, hey, what's up? Come with me. <laughs> 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 and it and it literally like I don't know if it takes it by its hand somehow, but it like it like they walk it. arm in arm together Dude, down the street. They walk over to this little like cockroach sanctuary area, like a little like safe haven to put the cockroach, which is now just the womb for the wasps' mm-hmm. future wasp children. Mm-hmm. And it lays this sack of eggs. I think it's like inside, if I'm remembering remembering correctly, or like. Some it lays it in there somewhere. You just gotta look the video up, and then you got this brainwashed, brainwashed cockroach that creates these babies for the wasp. And does it die upon creating the babies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's done. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's done. But so what I want some, this is like a, a graphic, probably going a little bit too far, or maybe not. No um, okay. analogy. Go far. But I wonder that sometimes if people look into their cell phone and people like working for the weekend and people spending their whole entire life just investing themselves to like making it, just making it. As long as you're in that place of like, oh fuck, man, if I I can't afford four hundred bucks, if my cell phone breaks, I'm not paying rent kind of feels a little bit like the cockroach to me mm. you know yeah. we're like whatever you say <laughs> just take me by the hand and keep me safe yeah you know okay cool sweet boss man is like i'm just gonna penetrate some eggs into you and you're gonna work for me and you're gonna sort this future of my children out and uh and then you'll die and then you'll fucking die I don't know. I mean, that's pretty dark. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the show took a gruesome <laughs> turn for the worse. It's <laughs> the darkest but we can take human it back. optimization hour. We that's can take right. it back. That's right. Show me something positive in that notebook. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the easiest interview forever. It's like Aaron's right. journal. Next. Next. All right. So I was watching Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, great movie. So Fucking good. Great movie. Probably God, one of the, Freddie Mercury probably, is so dope. Probably one of the best movies in the history of, of have movies you seen, I've seen Okay, for a while. real quick. Have you seen the trailer for the new Elton John movie? No. It looks insane. Really it looks good. so dope. It <laughs> looks fucking... I can't wait. I'm a huge Elton fan. I can't fucking wait to watch it. I didn't it. really even know, because Prince, because we now know that I'm, I'm a whippersnapper. I didn't even know how rad Prince was. Really? That movie like really cuz like his movie his music's so eccentric. It's hard to really unless Prince you were there. Shit. He's a total artist. I what, know. But, but I mean wait, now he I has a movie more. out? Oh, I said Prince. Yeah, I meant you said Prince. Oh, Freddie I meant, Mercury. I meant Queen. Oh yeah. Sorry, I meant Freddie Queen, Mercury. Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Sorry, my, my fault. Queen, yeah. I, I no, he was just a fucking performer. Like yeah. he could fucking own the stage. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I had. I had no idea. It was how cool to see the was. background, and I don't know how much that's accurate. Everybody always comes out after a movie like that, and like, well, this followed the truth. Yeah, but exactly. This was, in, you know, inconsistent with what actually happened. Right. It's like it was just a fucking dope movie. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. You know? So, anyways, so Freddie Mercury. He in the beginning of that, I was on an airplane, which is where all good movies manifest themselves, and I was watching this, watching this, this, this one, and in the beginning part of it, he's like trying to get the job to be the new lead singer mm-hmm. for. 
I don't know what they're called at the time. I don't think they're called Queen yet. Whatever they're called, mm -hmm. like some high school band. And they lose their lead singer. And they're like, oh, man. And, and Freddie Mercury comes up. He's like, well, I could sing for you. And he's got this like <laughs> jacked up mouth and he's all weird. And they're like, uh, like that's not going to work. And he mentions that he has four extra incisors in his mouth. That's why his mouth's all jacked up. And so because he has that extra space, i.e. nose breathing, he's able to create more vocal range, a.k.a. he's able to create more expression. Mm hmm you know, so if you're able to have that range of motion in your, in this case, the incisors in your mouth or, you know, the, your jawline, but also how does that manifest itself in the shoulder girdle? How does it manifest itself in the hip girdle and the knees, ankle range of motion, um, you know, just all of, all of the ranges of motion throughout your body. If you have full range of motion in your body at any point in the body, it gives you more capacity for more emotional expression mm -hmm. or any form of expression. And so I just thought, to me, I was just like, damn, that's dope. You know, so it's like, it's just, I it guess it goes back to nose breathing, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> Everything goes back. I think there's a book called Jaws that Brian McKenzie mentioned yeah. uh, on the show that talks quite a bit about this. But um, yeah, you know, like, it's, it's funny because like you're talking about expression. If you ever try to dance, like ecstatic dance after deadlifting or back squats. Yeah, it fucks you up. You're fucked. Yeah. <laughs> you're too stiff. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You're over there in the corner doing the two step. Yeah. You know, you can't really move and we open up the body. in a corner with that stuff. Yeah. You know, so weightlifting, and that's what I, I'm, I'm sure you see um, is people being kind of obsessive or dogmatic almost or religious with like specific types of exercise to the point that they become just like any dogma. They become stuck inside that. They can't see outside of the pale of that. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's it's like it's that example exactly. When you're all stiff and it looks like there's a stick going up your ass from your like you're working out, <laughs> and then the rest of the week you move literally like literally from your there's something your wrong desk. with you. Yeah, you know, it's like you're programming walk with stick in my ass. <laughs> like you're missing out on precious opportunities that you could have been working on movement function. Yeah. Well, I think there that's all just balance, right? You know, you, oh, yeah. you can I'm overdo deadlifting and squatting, over, all yeah, that stuff. I, I think love it's great. deadlift. I love back squat. Dude, I fucking yeah. love back squat. And I like a lot of different variations, but a barbell back squat is pretty fucking awesome with, with what it causes totally. physiologically. With that, you also have to pay attention to how much mobility work you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. like really like getting into a squat position while you're sore and hanging out there. You know, I don't know. I, I can't really do that 10 minute. Kelly Sturette in one whack, but I can get through the 10 minute squat test throughout the day. Yeah. And that, that adds up. Oh, it's easy. You know, that's yeah. the 10%. Mm -hmm. That's the saving up. Do just pop down. Like, I mean, you saw me do it at your house probably 16 times already. Like you can every touch your balls to the floor. That's right. Every time I, whatever, I got a freaking tinker something on my backpack. I'll put the backpack on the ground. I'll go down to a deep squat and tinker it down there. I have the option to stand up. You know, but it's like this is a perfect opportunity to mobilize my stuff. You know, and so with 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 the with the the weightlifting, I think it's the same thing we were talking about kind of earlier. It's like it's what is it, at what point is it excess? You know, so you can practice weightlifting and work more at like a like a like a neurological level, or more like a neuromuscular level, where you're trying to really kind of create like a you know recruit motor units and create like a more effective like lightning storm connection into your muscles. You know, and do like five by fives or something like, like that. Um, five by five being like five reps, five sets. Mm -hmm. um, as an example, and focus more on like actual strength output, you know, as opposed to just going until you murder your tissue. Yeah. Just, and you, you literally you can't move. Sore all the time. Yeah. Yeah. High volume training. I mean, it's, it's the one thing that shifted for me over the years since retiring is that. If I'm going to train high intensity, it's a very low volume. And if I'm going to train high volume, it's very low intensity. Mm. You know, like I'll do a, if I'm doing any kind of mileage on a distance run, it's nose breathing pace. Yeah. You know, and then if I'm going to run sprints all out, I'm not doing a whole lot of those. Like we did four sprints yesterday. So good. For a 10th of a mile, 160 yard sprints four, pretty much all out in, in succession with each other. And it was fucking hard. It's yeah, not, it was not fun after that. I didn't fucking enjoy the rest of the workout yeah. because we started with that. Maybe we should have finished with that. But you know what the biggest? Oh, go on. Sorry, I was you're, just going to say like that. When you do something like that, you have to understand what the intensity should match the volume in terms of how it's they're they're going to teeter totter is what I'm getting at. You yeah. know, they need to teeter totter because when you go all out 
for a long period of time, that's when you can destroy yourself. Yeah. And I think sometimes it's a good idea to go like Sundance ceremony style and like have a serious blowout. Mm -hmm. You know, not that I know anything about what the experience of having a Sundance is like, but, um, you know, I know what doing some variety of hard ish things is like. And I feel like those experiences throughout my life have been some of the most valuable. You know, so I'm not preaching always moderation. I think sometimes blowing it out is a really cool thing to do and see what's, what can you potentially do? But what was the thing I was thinking was with yesterday, like one of the most powerful aspects of the training that we did yesterday, I think was the community part. No doubt. We're slapping butts. We're high-fiving. We're freaking, everybody did a group wrestle with like Whitney in the Miller. So it wasn't totally, yeah. so it wasn't a, a totally gay. creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was <laughs> not anything wrong with that sure we go further style. man on man under the no, body situation good. was not 50 50 it's bisexual so it's so funny how guys do that like even during the picture like oh let's uh put whitney in the miller whitney in the miller <laughs> whitney, whitney in the miller whitney, whitney in, in the, the middle miller. that was good <laughs> miller in the middle the miller in the middle <laughs> yeah, so funny. It was like car seats yeah you know if the girls if the girls <laughs> nice, like she, she needs balance it it's gonna be you don't want people to see <laughs> whatever People are cute. So you're writing a book. Right the day of book. When's it coming out? January 2020, probably maybe February. Ooh. It's interesting having it's, uh, yeah. That's that's the interesting thing. Like me by myself, there'd be a good chance that I'd finish the manuscript, say that was a great experience. I learned a lot and then just move on. Me with like a whole group of people, you know, teams of people in New York and LA and all the kind of like organization and a co-writer working, and it's like duh. I'm like, oh shit, I have to show up. Mm. Totally different game for me. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, so uh, January or February, we don't have an official book deadline yet. They say spring of 2020, which means anywhere okay. from like December to like actual spring, essentially. Okay. And that's going to be all about movement. Kind of, sort of. It's kinda more like, sorta. it's kind of like what we're talking about. Like, I don't, uh, my lens isn't so like, move you know it's kind of more like the mind body part okay is the thing that i'm really enamored by and interested in so what have you <laughs> learned that's interesting because one of the things that i loved about chris ryan when he was saying you don't write a book about the thing you know you write a book about the thing you don't know Fuck that way yeah. you get to learn while you're totally going. oh dude what have you learned new that you didn't know before in writing this book Oof, man i mean honestly the upcoming book is one that i will be able to use as a the baseline foundation for what i'm interested in studying for the rest of my life i'm almost positive i can say that like i can keep on going deeper and deeper into each one of those chapters and say mm. okay cool like i'm still in like the nascent baseline figuring this stuff out i'll probably say it when i'm 60 hopefully yeah you know and, and so one example well something that I, I i think i i've learned quite a bit about quite more about is just again, how our environment forms us, you know, so a few of the chapters in there is like simple, like really simple, actionable tools on how you can start to align because it's the name of my mm -hmm. everything, um, your home and your office and your travel so that you can get a little bit more of that, that 10% savings every time you're just existing in your house. Mm. Um, but one of the interesting things is, is just like the, the psychic weight of being in a disorganized house, being in a messy house. You know, so you go into a room, like you are being imprinted by everything in that room. You know, we're imprinting each other right now. We're literally like, you know, we're attuning. We're kind of like becoming in part with each other right now. Mm -hmm. You know, you can feel that, I'm sure. Like that's a part of, that's like a part I of your- feel it in my, my root chakra. Yeah, exactly. Right. Totally. I'm getting right. a semi. Yeah. Um, you know, and so when you go into a room, like just paying attention to like, Oh wow, do you feel tired? You know, do you like chronically, do you have like chronic fatigue or whatever kind of terms you would put on it? And then you go into your house and every time you walk into the room, shit's disheveled, your bed's unmade, you got stuff on the floor, you just have you're like a hoarder kind of mm -hmm. sort of, maybe not completely, but it's almost like borderline. Like that's tiring to be in. Like your brain literally has to process those things as you walk into that room. Yeah. And so something as simple as that, there's all sorts of research around that, how it, it actually is, it, it makes your cognitive function more efficient to be in a room that is feng shui. Yep. Declutter, declutter that. Let De the energy flow. Declutter that. Yeah. Like looking at your space because it is an extension of your mind, an extension of your biology.
Someone was saying that about cleaning the yard. Like if your yard is fucking overgrown and not well organized, then that's kind of uh, the reflection of your life at that point. Fuck yeah. So like, you know, absolutely pulling the weeds, mowing the lawn. That's all important stuff. Even if you just have it done and it's done every two weeks by a lawn care person, that's still, you know, that's still okay. It doesn't mean you have to do it yourself, but like you got to get that done. Yeah. 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 Another thing that's, that's, I'm a, a chapter in the book is the, the, the power of touch. You know, and that's something. So essentially, I the book that I'm writing, it gets into all of the fringe subjects of like fitness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so I'm like, it's cool. We we understand, you know, that we you know pull ups and all that stuff, which I, I have like hanging and all that. I have this the standard fundamentals in there. Okay, um, but there's a lot of other components that don't have as loud of a voice that I think is is like the foundation of our health. You know, for yeah. example, being contacted by another human being. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, you're you familiar with like the Romanian orphanages. I feel like I probably talked to you about it before. No. Yeah. Tell me. Oh, this is good. Yeah, this is important stuff. Um, so I thought you were taking a notepad out. You're taking a snooze thing out. <laughs> a little I was like, oh, Kyle baby. really cares what I'm saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, no. got a, I got a fucking note taker right here. My boy Ryan Giles and Chris Fortina. I hired a note taker for you. <laughs> um, Romanian orphanages. Orphanages. Um, so during the fall of uh, communism, there was a lot of um, Romanian childrens. There was like like an excess of of babies, and they to the point that it was like they just they couldn't take care of them. It was essentially like a storage house for for babies and children. And what they found is that there's a thing called uh, failure to thrive, where essentially if you don't have that contact, that not just physical contact, but also that like that emotional attunement, like we need it. Mm -hmm. Your body stops processing information, essentially your body stops growing, you know? And so with these children, they had, they end up having all sorts of learning disabilities. They wouldn't grow correctly, um, just because they're not contacted. And they're like, Whoa, what's wrong? Is something like in the water or whatever? And you're like, and then all of a Did sudden, did all their parents die? In, in the war, war I think it was because they were I don't actually know the exact the exact uh reason of why there were so many there I was like looking into what the exact reason was uh -huh. like recently I was like what is the exact thing I'm sure somebody listening I'm sure a lot of people listening know this um so I apologize for not knowing I don't the exact, know that the exact anyone reason. listening knows this oh. but continue <laughs> <laughs> whatever back to the point of the kids damn it yeah anyways um but throughout that, though, they they weren't able to grow, essentially. You know, and they have mm. all these learning disabilities. And then they ended up being able to get more caretakers. And after they got more caretakers, all of a sudden, they start, oh, they start, they start to grow. They start to get stronger. They start to, you know, laugh. And they start to, like, come alive, essentially. You know, and so it's like that. I think it's easy for us to think, like, oh, yeah, of course, you got to touch a baby. Duh. No big deal. I think adults are just a bunch of big babies. We are for sure, <laughs> for know? sure. You know, so it's a, it's a similar thing. Like if you look at like we were we were talking recently about like macaque baboons, um, their average time that they're grooming each other throughout the day is like 120 minutes a day. All they would need is like 30 minutes. You know, so like over 20 percent of their day is devoted. We did, I did an Instagram post with you when I was mm -hmm. like grooming your your neck, your traps, aka I was like leaning my elbow into his into his shoulder. Um, you know, and so that's something that you see in primates. It's like a supernatural thing. We touch each other. Super normal. In fact, it's a part of our whole political hierarchy. It's a part of our whole care system. You know, if we don't do that, we don't, if there's this, this tribal disconnect, mm. right? What are we kind of in right now in Western culture? You know, it feels to me like essentially we're in a tribal disconnect is the way it, is the way it appears. Mm -hmm. You know, like our tribe is this digital tribe inside of the screen. You know, yeah. it's really hard to groom a screen. In fact, it's true. You kind of, it's almost like you are grooming it in a way. <laughs> Every time you touch I think it, that's some real shit. I think we are grooming. I think we're grooming the future, the future race, the future singularity, whatever, electronic age. It seems yeah, like that definitely, the, definitely could be the case. It'd be interesting to see, like the, the vision, not that everything that I see in, in plant medicines comes to true, to be true, but I would say like 95% of it does. Uh, there was nothing to fear with the rise of AI. Yeah, it with you. Seamless, seamless, you are the cell phone. Seamless integration. It's We're easy. already integrated completely with it. Well, it's easy to shit on the cell phone. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not shitting on the cell phone. I think it's, 
with anything, it's a tool. I mean, everybody's, a lot of people said this more times. I don't need to say it again, but I'm going to say it again. Um, you know, it's like, a, it's like a knife. You can use a knife for, to cut your arm off or you can use it to like chop vegetables. You know, so the cell phone is a full powerful tool, amazing tool, incredible, you know? Um, but I think that it's, it's, we need more emotional intelligence is yeah. a big thing. Yeah. You know, so that's something we, like we have, other people have said this too. I don't remember what, how it goes exactly, but we have like the, what was it? Like the technological intelligence of like a seventh grader and the emotional intelligence of like a four-year-old. You know, not that exactly, <laughs> but something roundabout. You know, like we have this, we have like pretty, pretty deep technological intelligence, maybe. Um, but as far as the way people feel, to wielding all that stuff, you know, I don't, I don't think it's, it's quite synchronized. You know, it feels yeah. like I, there is a push, though. I mean, obviously, people listening to this show and 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 Align Podcast are on the path. You know, they're, yeah, they're trying to do shit right, no doubt. Uh, but you see it in corporate wellness. You know, Exos is in with Intel and Google and a ton of these giant corporations, and they have nap pods and fucking full-blown CrossFit workout centers on campus and all these different things and really good food where you can choose like any kind of food in every single building yeah. on the Google campus. Um, I think that's the shift going forward. You know, and like here at on it, we have unlimited PTO, obviously they fucking, <laughs> somebody's p- keeping an eye on that. It's not like I can take off 300 days a year and still get paid the same. Yeah. But I didn't even know what PTO means. That's how paid time off. No, I know. I know no, now. Okay. After okay. you said it, yeah, that's how. Yeah, but like the, there's there's a lot of things is. like that where you have that kind of flexibility, and um, I think that's the shift we see because big corporations realize as you study this stuff that if you want better work output, there should be time to meditate or time to nap in the middle yeah. of the day, and then the second half of your day will be way better. You won't have that mid afternoon lull, and if there's good healthy food, you can grab. Then and there's still shit food there, but you have the choice, right? And they they also did this too. This is really cool. Was their biggest displays have green apples, bananas, and fruit, and their smallest displays have like pop tarts and the bullshit that people would eat because they know the first thing you see that's what you gravitate towards. Yeah. So like that, it's it's everything is designed with intention, and I think when you look at it led that way. It gives me hope for the future mm. because we've been fucking so off course for so long. And it really is just negligence. It has nothing to do with ill will. It has nothing to do with, you know, I mean, I certainly think big agriculture, there's a problem with big agriculture and things like that. But, you know, food scientists are going to make stuff flavorful. And as Rob Wolf talks about, we were wired to eat. So those yeah. flavor combinations make us want to eat more. Um, but outside of that, there will be a return to eating whole foods and fucking really you know good things things that make us feel better that help us operate better yeah and this see- is like a tinfoil rant so i'll keep it very limited but it really surprises me that that like the food substitutes like you're describing um like jolly ranches and shit are even legal oh yeah well in a lot of countries they aren't in like northern europe they're pretty pretty well regulated in fact craft had to change uh, their mac and cheese in order to be able to sell it in there because they really protect children. So they could they had to use annatto, which is a natural food coloring for yellow, mm. instead of like yellow one or whatever the fucking number is, right? Mm. They couldn't use artificial colors. They couldn't use artificial sweeteners. There's no aspartame allowed in chewing gum anywhere in Northern Europe, in the Nordic countries. So, you know, like all the, and that's in our gum. It's in our Diet Coke. It's fucking everywhere. Yeah. You know, it's in, it's in sugar-free Red Bull. I mean, it's a neurotoxin. Yeah. It's like nobody's looking out for us here. Like I think the government's the whole, not looking out for us. I think you the here. whole thing, I think people are looking out for us. I think in general, like their intention, no, maybe not us, but they're looking out for something. Um, I, I, I don't think like the intention of most of these corporations is like evil. Well, I would agree with most, but I mean, I don't think the intention of Monsanto is to destroy the earth because yeah. then there's nobody left to sell I to. I bet you from their perspective, but, they think they're doing the best thing they can do. But is my guess. yeah, I mean, but they're not. You know what I'm saying? Like but they're you, not. You could think Absolutely. like you could think like nor am I. We're going to we're going to solve ways, world hunger by creating genetically modified foods, and then that's the th- the sales pitch you give to everyone. They know better. They know they're genetically modifying food to use more glyphosate Roundup, a product they make. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they certainly they, they know that. They at least know the the. Yeah. It is for cash. It's for profit. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I just, I feel as though we're a product of our environment. We're a product of our education, you know? And so these companies, they're getting the education that this is the way, you know, and this is the direction they go. And it's like what our species of human has done over millennia is we've figured out how to make our life more comfortable, you know, and this gets back to, I'm, I'm veering back towards movement stuff because that's the only thing that I'd like spend any time like looking into, which I probably need to expand my horizons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's all we've done. You know, we've, 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 we've ameliorated anything that's like challenging, physically challenging for our bodies to do, you know, and it's like, I, th- I think that, that the intention of that is positive, you know, like it started off positive. You know, and now it gets to the point where it's like, okay, we've gone kind of too far that we're kind of reaching like idiocracy level. <laughs> like, like we're there. You know, if you look like go to a fucking hockey game or go to a football game, nothing against anybody, but like just look around the stands, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure yeah. it's not you or your family. I'm sure you guys are the ones that are like keeping it together. But in general, if you look around, it's like, Oh, it's like, okay. Like I see a, it's an uncanny resemblance to, to that movie, I think, you know? And so, so within that, I think what we need to do is we just need to like, we need to do our own research. Like we can't trust the man. Yeah. You can't go blind faith with anybody. You need to do your own research. You know, you need to seek out people that are um, doing a good job. You know, seek out people that are bright in their eyes. You know, seek out people that are healthy. Seek out people that are efficient. Seek out people that are like effective at what they're doing. You know, and that's the magic of things like this podcast. That's the magic of things like like social media. And like, like we all have like these little kind of like our little like heroes that we can look up to. And I think that we're like, who watches the news? Like, do you watch the news? No, but old people do. A yeah. lot of people do. Like I newspapers? Mean, my family members watch the fucking news because they feel like they don't know what's going on in the world. I'm like, wait a and minute. So Here's the bad news. You're going to learn <laughs> what's bad in the world, not anything of what's relevance. Ter- we need to know what's terrible in the world. Yeah, How can we that's the go thing. on like, without knowing that? I can find out. Very like, There was a... You sent a package out to me back in the day here in Austin, and there was an Austin bomber who was making bombs at people's doorsteps oh, in yeah. the form of a package... And he fucked a lot of people up. Um, that's an important thing to know if you live in Austin. Well, I don't watch the news. And how did I hear about that? Word of mouth. Right. People are like, dude, you hear about that fucking Austin bomber? Yeah. And and it's on Twitter. It's on social media. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's not a... But that's the thing. The things that you need to hear you're, will they're gonna make it yeah, on the Twitter. Yeah, you don't have to watch to hear. Because you actually you need to have hear people that up. you intentionally follow. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you see like a light, you know, of like, I like that guy. Whatever he's doing, working. Mm-hmm. Whatever he's reading about, I want to read it. Yeah. You know, yeah. or you can listen to like the, the just the bad news, like just what's what's projected in order to get you to, you know, what 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 bleeds leads. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just that shock factor of getting, and that's I mean, social media is certainly guilty of that as well. But you can still be decisive upon who you're following within social media. Yeah. You know, so it feels to me as as though there is like a transition happening where you can actually choose. You can actually make a conscious decision of where your information comes from. Yeah, it's pretty which, cool. Which podcasts to listen to? Obviously, y'all are listening to podcasts. That's awesome. But I mean, like, there's, I see that shift coming too. Just look at the way podcasting is blown up. And look at the way YouTube is blown up. And obviously, there's a lot of bullshit on YouTube. There's a lot of bullshit in podcasts. But <clears throat> the cream rises to the top, Mr. Mm. Aaron Alexander. Mm. And you have one of my favorite podcasts. I'm about to jump on it. Bam. We need a potty break. Woo! It's been a quick 40, 45. Right, Ryan Giles? How long was that? 48. There we go. Damn, your timing. We're going to get... That's a good indication that you have uh, solid introspection skills. Oh, Oh. but you've looked on your fucking cell phone. Never mind. Yeah, that's great. You thought I had my internal (laughs) clock going? (laughs) No, that's real. No, that's real. I'm trying to keep us on track. You got to massage Aubrey's genitals later. Oh, yeah. Right, we're going to do an intranal massage. No, we're not. That's right. The deep... You got to get his deep prostate going. (laughs) All right. I love you, brother. (laughs) I love Uh, you. (laughs) Align podcast. And then... We're going over to the other side, the dark side. Align therapy. We'll link to all the the fucking social media. Align therapy is not a thing. It's just Align podcast. Okay. Align podcast. But what's your social handle? Align Podcast. Okay. Yeah. That's Websites Align Podcast. Align Podcast all okay. that stuff's Align Podcast. Cool. Easy peasy. Easy Japanese. peasy. Jumping over. All right. Thanks for listening.